between earth and sky. How art challenges gravity and light in our habitat. Tomas Serracheno, artist, Studio Tomas Serracheno. On November the 9th, 1989, I was in Argentina following the events in front of the TV. Well, uh, thank you. And wow, this is super strong light. But anyway, I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. Um, and I have like basically it's, like, it's a big, big kind of trouble. I brought like 400 slides. <laughs> this means we have somehow to manage. And I always thought like a, you know one kind of funny experiment will be that all of our, all of you have some kind of these machines, and somehow you can kind of kind of keep clicking, 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 and somehow I can I might be able to stop whatever it, it is and try to say something or try to connect something. But um, yeah, we will see how far we can get and. Um, and then also maybe you can interrupt or whatever, ask question also. Let, let's not be like a, um, yeah, so unidirectional somehow. But anyway, I, I thought, uh, I think so I have the images also here. But uh, that, that's a small experiment that I was doing. And, and then basically what it happened is also, and I thought also it's kind of in, in, in the same way of, of, of trying to combine these 400 images of how you can, I mean, I, I will ask you for a lot of uh, imagination from your side to try to, to put the things together. But in this way, you know, there was this experiment that was run, I think, in the 60s that, uh, you know, usually a video are like a 24 frame per second. And with this kind of give like a kind of motion that you don't see somebody walking very, very slow. And what I was doing is like a trying to put a camera together with a ventilator. And in somehow every time that one of these blades go through, it take a picture. This means as there was a lot of wind, then you get kind of a, a very high speed camera. It means it will take kind of tack, 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 many, many pictures. And then a little bit is like kind of this relationship also, you, and, and I think so there is something, you know, like a, that today also with, with this machine we were trying to, to combine the things. It's like a, because I was trying to press at the full speed and how fast it can go. And there is this kind of relationship between the, you know, I have always like a, some friends who are kind of very intelligent, or what is intelligence is, is kind of the relationship of the balance between how much uh, memory that you can storage and how fast you can process the memory that you, I mean, the storage uh, that you have, you know, the gigabyte versus the RAM. And somehow this is what is, uh, what is about and how you might be able to see something. Anyway, um, well, I just go pretty fast. <laughs> I changed the mouse anyway. This is in Bolivia, um, and this is a salty lake. It's one of the, the, the flattest surfaces on Earth. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. One of the things which also I think so I, I would like to tell is more about the, what you don't see this, in these images, what it happened during the night. Uh, during the night also, as you can imagine, all the stars get reflected on the water. And there are these moments that you, yeah, you step on, on this kind of uh, immense lake, and then all the stars kind of somehow wrinkle. Um, well, it's, it's a video that I will try to do like a, in a, in the next, next, next time. And somehow, you know, this kind of reverberation, somehow, you know, I've been trying, uh, working for a couple of years on the idea of building a kind of a flying city, or as Pak Mr. Fuller have my put it, you know, like we are flying around the sun at a very uh, high speed. We are floating already on the planet Earth. And, and somehow this is one of the latest installations I did. This is in Italy now, in the Hangar Bicocca. And somehow you, you can get this idea of, again, like a kind of a, being kind of immersed in a kind of a universe again. In this case, you know, it's like a, it's all this huge cube pressurized with air. Does it mean uh, every time that somebody opened the door in the lower part, uh, people start to fall very quickly? And you can listen from the upper, close the door! Does it mean there is a kind of a huge ecosystem between the people who are up there and maybe unconsciously is also when you enter into the room, somehow it might happen. But also, it doesn't happen only on one layer. When it happens, there are like a three layers. This mean, let me try to go a little bit faster. When somebody is on the top layer, and then it squeezes the person, which is in the lower layer. In the middle layer, it squeezes the other person. And somehow, it gets kind of pretty much interconnected and very complicated to pass by all the law and legislation and the security, you know, left and right. Because there is a moment, you know, if three or more people are all in the same place, it kind of really go deep. And then it's very difficult to move out from that. Does it mean the distribution of the people onto the space is kind of uh, yeah, uh, pretty challenging to get uh, the approval of the, <laughs> of the, of the rules? Anyway, um, well, there are some inspiration and, and left and right, some experiments. 
I will go a little bit quicker. There were some models which we're doing. Uh, let me get it there. You see, now it's getting a little bit slower. Ah, well, that's also interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's at the beginning when I, you know, nobody wants to jump into the thing. I say, well, let's try, you know, and then it's kind of, it's get drown and drown and then I, myself even, I was afraid somehow. But anyway, it, 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 it works and, and, and you can go there. But uh, I mean, and then the next idea is like, let's pick up, you know, when we build it, it was an intention to build it and then to try to do something with it. And then um, now I'm, I'm going on Monday to the MIT, and then we are trying then to pick up this thing and go to the Maldives island, and then we might be able to desalinize the water and to drink, and you know, the Maldives in the best scenario in 15, 20 years might be disappear. This, I mean, there is this idea all the time to try to make these kind of uh, flying cities or to try to recognize uh, some patterns which are up there. And these are the first, one of the first drawing and how we might be able to generate this kind of cluster. You might have seen some of this image before. In this case, are kind of a singles, a little bit more small experiment. But I will try to get up that. Well, that's a solar balloon. There are very little of that. They can fly only with solar energy. Basically, they'll produce with plastic bags um, with 550 micron uh, thickness. And basically, a weekend, two person can build a machine who can put a man into the air. Um, i show you a little bit like a, hmm? Uh, let, let me that, that one, less than one percent, five percent, it costs more to recycle back. Well, that, that's a little bit also critical. Let's put it that way. Th this means, you know, we have a high qualified material that we might be able to do something. And then we start to collect these plastic bags. And this is in Colombia and in other places. This is a kind of a huge community of how we might be able to, let's say, to build the flying city. And then we, in this we call it Museo Aerosolar. And then we, we tape and all of them and then somehow fly up in the air. Also, just only with solar energy. There is no hydrogen, there is no helium, there is nothing. Just like when you get in a, in a car which is dark, it, it, it kind of heat up the air a little bit more. Well, this is another project which was more about to make a mobile clinic for prevent HIV in Africa, which somehow also, you know, is, um, you know, my, my father was always working for the United Nations going to kind of uh, uh, thing and, and then, you know, I imagine, you know, like the classic coming, the, you know, and then coming to a village and say, well, today we will talk about HIV when, you know, people, they do not talk about sex, even in some culture and something, but imagine you come up with this huge balloon, which is flying condom over the city, and you say, you know, everybody will come up there and then start to talk about something and then, you know, ideas might be spread and, you know, there is a kind of a sense of community of how you can communicate something and at least you will ask what, what the hell is going on. Well, uh, <laughs> we go through, well, uh, you know, then I keep with this very strong idea of how, you know, there are some part more technically, a balloon, how you collect the solar energy, and left and right, how we build it. Uh, ah, this button have to quick. <laughs> no, I want to reach a, a moment of the presentation. Uh, well, that's a little, little bit crazy also because <laughs> I'm trying to go back. No, here is in Brazil, these are three levels, this is mean. That was more, I mean, it's almost scary as the one of in Italy, um, because the guys up there, really, when you open the door, it all collapses, a structure which only built by air. This mean, <laughs> was, a, was a pretty challenging. Here, the queen of, of Holland have entered also by herself. <laughs> she said, anyway, OK. But there are some, you know, I always enjoy uh, talk with scientists, and there is some kind of uh, fruitful col collaboration that how it might happen things. This is, uh, is uh, we are trying to bring it down from the metropolitan is in New York in the, in the rooftop in the terrace, but due to the storms, uh, it's not coming down. Uh, well, this, maybe this weekend will, 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 will come down. But anyway, there are, I, you know, I'm from Argentina and I love to eat barbecues and then we are trying now to, to make a, 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 fly, a, a solar cooking, flying, cooking a chicken inside a balloon. This is <laughs> the thing in the metropolitan somehow also we thought that let's make kind of a big grill for people. But, and then I, I love the, the post or, the, or, the, or the, when I was in 2009 in a residence at, at, at NASA in, um, due to the International Space University, I always loved Don Petty, the astronaut. And uh, the other thing, idea was also to see he might be able, you know, to see this light traveling kind of outer space and, and you know, to, to pay reward to, well, there are other cultures who have been doing this. But, Okay, now we, we, this is a beautiful essay of Bruno Latour that he wrote, and I thought that 
the last four and 33 seconds, I will spend a little bit talking about this project, um, which uh, somehow it kind of, uh, I was very mu uh, much enjoyed today, the presentation by Nicola, I think so. He was talking a lot about spider webs and materials and left and right. And what I was always kind of surprised is like in many uh, astrophysicians or journalists or, or reviews and left and right, they always try to explain the origin of the universe based on Volker Sprinkler and Max Planck Institute when they did make this millennium simulation and they tried to see how this cosmic web have generated. The way how, or the analogy that I always try to find is uh, they, they always talk about this cosmic web or drops of water caught in a three dimensional spider web. And then, very simple, I say, well, uh, this, we did an interview. Uh, with him, and this a little bit the images that they get through this uh, simulation of the millennium simulation. And I said, well, very simple. I mean, when I got the invitation by Daniel Birman to go to the Venice Biennale, we said, well, let's buy some black widows, which, <laughs> which, which is not allowed to ship them, but you find somebody, not, not during the weekend, you have to order on Monday to arrive to your studio. This is the studio, black widow come up, and then together with Peter Yeager from the Senckenberg Museum, a very, now became a very good friend, uh, we, we decided to put a, a, this black widow inside this box and see which type of web he might be able to do. Another thing which we got very interesting is today, well, after the black widow, we take it out and we put a tag in area and let's see, uh, because the spider usually are solitary, they do not like to uh, spin a web on top of another web, and we kind of force them to work together <laughs> somehow. But, but, but uh, anyway, we tried many methods. The idea, the, the, the exhibition was coming up, I have to open, and then this was at the Gate Institute, we asked them if we can scan, but in any way, uh, you might have known the thickness of the spider web is very, very thin, it's thousands of a millimeter. This means there was no way and there is no other, anybody who have done it before. This means, uh, then we, we contact um, um, in, in DARTSA, the Technical University of DARTSA, the Institute of Photogrammetry. And with them, you know, I, I was one day like thinking how we can do it because the exhibition was coming, we did not have a method, and, and it seems like also Samuel Chokel, which is the person which is more expert in the university in Basel about uh, uh, interpretation or trying to uh, understand the emerging properties of uh, spider webs. Uh, humans always understand the B dimension. You can divide a spider web in three dimensional or B dimension. Does it mean uh, um, the three dimension, the B dimensional is more like the one that, you know, there are circles, the concentric one. I'm talking with the brightest scientists here, but <laughs> anyway, the three dimension, there is no even machine or, or nobody has ever understood how they are done. This means uh, we, we kind of start to work together, and then what we did is like a, just with a laser, uh, like, because uh, you illuminate the, the box of the spider and you see exactly all the points, the interference between the sheet laser and the points. Based on this, then we start to draw slide by slide. And then based, it took us, I mean, it's a two years project, right? And then we, we, we start to draw all the thing, and then we wanted to build it in three dimensional. This means we got a lot of numbers and then... <laughs> oh my God, that was a crazy thing. <laughs> and this is how the method is. <laughs> we are trying to build it up. That was a two weeks, day and night, day and night, because the show have to, you know, somehow have to be, be ready. And this is, yeah, during the exhibition. Yeah, this is when you enter. People are still allowed to walk through, no? I mean, and you start to recognize something, there is a kind of a very confusing area, then you get a valley, then you usually go to a retreat area. Oh, somebody have cut it. Anyway, maybe I have still 39 seconds, but mm, somehow it might have happened there. But anyway, I was uh, pretty um, happy about this collaboration with a lot of scientists. I think so there was been uh, then with Jill Clement, we presented uh, a paper to send spider on space and see how the web might be built in microgravity. They have been published, I think, so four scientific papers, everybody in his own field. I was in the art field, but, you know, presented in the Technology Congress or in Poland with Peter Yeager, and everybody got his own interest on the, on the work. And I'm, I'm happy, and thank you for the presentation. <laughs>